Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Baskerville Barney, the most recent escalation on the Dartmoor map for Hitman 3. As you'll see for the first level, I want to start as Mansion Security and all you really need to have with you is a silenced pistol. So it's simple loadout, just make sure uh, that you've got that uh, starting location as Mansion Security. Um, as soon as you've done that, you can leave the staff area, which you can see I've done. Um, and you just need to be aware that the mansion itself will be a trespassing area for mansion security. However, we're about to get ourselves one of the bodyguard outfits. So you want to make your way to this bathroom. You can see the route I took here. Um, and you want to turn on the tap that I've just turned on. That's going to attract one of the security bodyguards um, in the outdoor area, just adjacent to this bathroom to come and check it out, which will provide us with a very good opportunity to subdue him and to acquire his disguise. Again, not really a disguise for him, is it? Just his, his uniform, his work clothes. But uh, yes, for us, it is going to be a disguise. And we will take that off him as soon as he's into the cupboard. There we go. Just change into his nice bodyguard clothes. Um, I remembered that I hadn't picked up his gun. I don't think anyone comes into this bathroom anyway, but I decided to go and grab the gun just to make sure that it's not going to cause us any problems. And then you can make your way to the main, uh, I suppose it's the lounge area, the uh, main living atrium in which the two targets, Emma Carlyle and Gregory Carlyle, are living. They're enjoying their lives. Uh, so, the way you want to approach the challenge of getting accident kills on these two is that very conveniently there are two uh, candelabras on the ceiling that we can try our best to get to fall on their heads. I think you could actually get both with one, but I don't manage to do that in this first level. Um, it becomes a lot more complicated to do this, by the way, for the second and third levels, but for the first one, um, it's fairly simple. As long as you are a bit careful about who actually sees you firing your shots, um, you, as long as you have this disguise, you should be able to make sure that you take both of these people out in accident kills relatively simply. So you'll see what I was going for here. I tried to get them both um, with the one candelabra here. Basically, you need to get Gregory to stand up, and I found the best way to do that is some kind of distraction there. Now, if I'd shot the candelabra quickly enough here, I think I could have got both of them. Uh, you'll see as it is, I only get one of them. So, Emma's husband has now been killed in a horrific candelabra accident. Um, of course, there's no way they could have known who, who caused that. <laughs> um, so... Yes, now we just need to wait for her to move on from the tragic passing of her husband, which she does very quickly. You'll see she's already on the phone about something completely different. Then she'll go um, and make another phone call. Uh, no, just text someone by the looks of it. I've sped up this part of the video just so you don't see all the waiting around for her to get back into the groove, but it doesn't take her that long, actually. And like I say, you should really be aiming to get them both with one shot, I think. Anyway, as she walks back towards the window, that's your cue. Just crouch down behind this chair if you want to follow exactly what I did. And shoot the other candelabra and it will fall down on her head, getting you the second accident kill. Uh, at this stage, hopefully, the people in charge of the maintenance of this mansion are strongly considering whether they need to get the strength of the chains which hold up their candelabras. Uh, Examined, but not quickly enough to prevent us from taking out Patrick Carlyle uh, in much the same fashion. Now again, I uh, very shortly will start speeding up uh, the waiting around that there was for him to get into position, just because that's quite annoying. He does walk back and forth under the candelabra. Uh, there are stages at which, during his routine, he will actually stand underneath it for an extended period of time. Uh, you just need to catch one of those occasions. You you can get it when he's just crossing the room and he does walk underneath the candelabra. Anyway, in this particular playthrough, I actually missed a few opportunities, so you don't need to watch through all this. Just um, just wait until you get your opportunity. And here we go. I think we're just coming up to the point at which I finally manage his assassination. 
here we go so you can see he's just about to traverse the room and that drops on his head I knew something was up with today, didn't I? like mother like father like son and they're all dead and that is our first stage of this escalation contract basically done you just need to find your way to an exit And this one's nice and convenient. Uh, when you have a disguise, it's not so easy to use this exit when you don't have a disguise and when these gardeners are um, enforcers, that that goes badly for you. So we'll use this for the first exit um, and you'll see that I'm forced to take a slightly longer route for the exit for the second and third levels. But there we go, that's level one. Uh, nice job. That wasn't as quick as I could have done that. Um, and indeed, I got markedly more practiced at this particular escalation layout um, for the second and third levels, which you will see now. So for this second level of the escalation, you want to be uh, starting in the behind the mansion starting location. You want to be bringing with you an emetic syringe and the titanium crowbar. Uh, and a silenced pistol, of course. Those are the important things here. And the reason you want to start behind the mansion is that um, you are not allowed to wear any disguise apart from your suit here, uh, and you can't start in any location that has a non-suit disguise. So that basically only leaves you with a couple of options, and this is by far the best to get you into the mansion and ready to go quickly. And as you can see, I'm wearing the tactical wetsuit um, from Hawks Bay on Hitman 2, uh, just because I thought it was cool. Um, it's as if you've emerged from the lake behind the mansion. Anyway, we want to take this member of the wait staff out and hide his body in the bushes here, where no one will find it. Um, he is just in quite an annoying location, um, so you may be able to find your way around him or to distract him, but uh, personally, I just decided to knock him over the head with a crowbar because uh, given that you're allowed to knock out non-targets here, we may as well. Now, you want to wait for, I think this is Edward Carlyle, to be finished playing the piano, at which point he will go and stand at the window, uh, just to our current left. As soon as he goes to stand there, you can jump through this window and syringe him with our emetic syringe. Uh, that's why you need the emetic syringe and that will cause him to go to the bathroom that we'll be able to find our way to separately uh, if you take the route that I'm showing you, just going through the opposite doors to him. Uh, as soon as he's syringed, um, he cannot spot you, I'm fairly sure, so you don't need to worry about being seen by him. He'll make his way, as you can see there. Um, he, he goes out of the room to the right, and then down the hallway that we can see in front of us here. Uh, so you just need to wait for him to make his way along that path. There's nowhere else he can go. He will go into this bathroom and you can just follow him in and drown him here. And of course drowning counts as an accident kill. So that's good. And that's our first accident kill. Remember all of these kills do need to be accident kills all through levels 1 to 3. I'll hide his body, um, not that you really need to, there's no reason to as I'm fairly sure without prompting no one's going to come into this bathroom and I, sh I decide to syringe open this locker just to see what's in there but there's just an outfit that we can't use. So with uh, Edward Carlyle down we're going to go back into the kitchen area and grab the um, propane tank. Uh, you just want to make sure that the way is clear before you try and leave that room. Uh, I decided to take quite a, a risky route through the staff room, but no one saw me. And I've got the propane tank, so mission complete from that perspective. And then we can make our way along down to the library, up the stairs in the library, where Patrick Carlyle, one of our targets, is, of course. Um, then you want to turn on this radio that's going to get uh, one of the bodyguards who's patrolling the hall in front of us to come and check out the distraction and as soon as he does and as soon as he's turned off the distraction we can throw our crowbar or whatever weapon we want to at him 
and that will let him let us take him out uh, we're just trying to clear the hallway ahead um, because otherwise the few guards there are along there can be a little bit annoying So you need to here always be conscious that there is a guard who patrols the hallway to your right there and um, if you're not careful he will see you if you cross through there. I head back just to see if there's going to be an opportune moment to take out uh, Patrick here but is there going to be? Yes, so just time it right, he'll walk under this candelabra and we can get our kill on Patrick there. You have to be much more careful about the sequencing for the final stage when they introduce a time limit. But here, so we can just take the maid out with our propane tank. It actually looked like she would have become an uncon unconscious witness there, uh, but thankfully she did not. Uh, for whatever reason, didn't count a scene, so she's out. We can use our very useful crowbar to get that door open, and then we're in position um, with the propane tank ready to go to eliminate uh, Rebecca Carlisle in a moment. But first, we're just going to get our kills on Emma and Gregory. As we can see, Emma is just on her path, about to walk back. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to use Emma's death once she walks back to the candelabra at the far right hand end of the room that obviously is going to be the way that we kill her and also that is going to serve the purpose of getting her husband Gregory to stand up and look at what's happened and that takes him out so that's both of them and then we just need to pay attention to where Rebecca is on the map as she's our final target and we're going to use the propane tank to complete our assassination of her. So we're in position, we basically just have to wait quite a while for her to be in position. And I'll slightly speed up the video just so that you don't have to watch me wait for her to position herself. But thankfully with the uh, lack of time limits uh, which obviously are introduced for the third level of the escalation. I didn't have to worry too much about timing here, so I just patrol. I think this is Emma Carlyle's bedroom. Uh, just waiting for Rebecca Carlyle to be in position beneath us. Her path is that she will walk back into the room below us, go and uh, I, th I think she has a, a drink of something, uh, hesitates there for a moment, then, when she's ready, she'll walk over to the fireplace. Uh, I'm not sure what she does at the fireplace. I think she might have a phone call or at least check her phone. Anyway, it's immaterial for us. Uh, the important point is that she is stood at the fireplace, which does not bode well for her health. Because I'm about to drop high explosive on her. And there we go. That's the kill on Rebecca there. And again, we just need to find our way to an exit. Uh, you'll see the exit I'm going to use is just slightly more difficult for us to get to. So if you want to, you can take this path, which is just to, to go back down to the ground floor of the library where Patrick Carlyle was, and to uh, immediately run into the bushes here to avoid getting seen. Then just have a look at where the guards are around you, and assuming that you think you've got space and time um, you run past the parked cars at the end and that will allow you to drop down into the uh, moorland just outside the grounds of the mansion uh, and from there it's a fairly simple job to navigate your way back to the original mission start location for Dartmoor where there is of course a motorbike that you can ride away anyway I won't make you sit through all of this I will fast forward the video uh, so that you can see the route. And there we go, that will represent our exit from this second level of the escalation. Um, 
pretty good job there, I think. But as you'll see, the introduction of a time constraint for level 3 is going to make that all the more challenging, as you'd expect for level 3 of an escalation. So, without further ado, here's just the proof that it was a silent assassin rating. And you can see the unlocks that I'm getting, but they're not relevant. And here you can see the introduction of the rapid elimination escalation. So in order to help us with sequencing for this final level, uh, we are going to bring with us, rather than the emetic syringe this time, the emetic poison bile. Otherwise, we just need to have the same stuff, the titanium crowbar, any silenced pistol will probably do. Uh, you can ignore that I included the Karma Tranquilizer. I do actually pick that up in this run as well, but I never use it. And then we're starting behind the mansion, wearing pretty much whatever disguise you want, um, just as we did for the second level. So, let's take it away from behind the mansion. So, as before, we're just going to make our way up to the front of the mansion, being careful not to be seen by the guards and enforcers in the area. And as soon as we get to the front, we are going to want to take out that same member of the waitstaff again. Remember that until you actually perform any of the eliminations, the timer does not start running. Once it does, we're going to have 60 seconds in between each elimination. Uh, which just means that you have to sequence it nicely and be confident that you can get between those kills quickly. So, um, here we go. We're just going to knock him out and put him in the bushes as we did for the second level. Again, you may be able to find a way without doing this, but even for this third level we are not restricted from knocking out non-targets. And there's no timing penalty there either, because as I say, the timer doesn't start running yet. And actually, to, to perform this next bit, uh, we need to wait a little while here at this window anyway. What we're waiting for is for Edward Carlyle um, to finish being stood at the window, which is where we poisoned him in the second run. And he's going to go and stand over at the table and start reciting lines for a speech after he's taken a drink from the drink that is on the piano. So once he's finished having that sip of whatever the drink is, we're going to hop in through the window. Uh, he will have a, his back turned to us during this uh, and we can pour in the emetic vial. So we're still poisoning him with an emetic poison, just this time it's going to have a delayed effect because we're using the vial rather than the syringe. Then we can immediately go into the kitchen and grab our propane tank. And we can immediately make our way over to the library area where we're going to go upstairs and perform many of the same actions as we did during the second run. Um, here you actually have to wait a moment if you're following this sequencing uh, just because uh, the butler will have a conversation with the maid in the hallway there during which the butler would see you if you were unfortunate enough to stick your nose out now so you just wait for him to finish having that conversation then you can proceed up these stairs and immediately we want to activate the same distraction and just wait for our bodyguard friend to come and check out that distraction we're going to use our crowbar to take him out again and remember, although uh, I'm making fairly efficient work of this, you actually don't need to worry too much about timing, um, with the one caveat that actually Edward's poisoning is going to need to... Uh, it doesn't go on forever, basically. He, he will be sick in that bathroom for a while, but not forever. So you do need to actually be slightly conscious of timing, even though we haven't started any of our... 60 second time as yet so remember you need to be conscious of this guard patrolling the hallway to our right just make sure that he's not currently looking in this direction as you cross to take out the maid and we'll hide the maid's body again not particularly sure whether you need to hide the maid's body i don't think anyone's going to come to this area anyway but we're going to hide her uh, because from here on in actually uh, our timing is fairly dictated by the movements of the targets rather than by us, so there's no particular advantage to not hiding her body. Let's stash the propane ready to be dropped down the same vent shaft as it was last time, and just get ourselves back into position to carry out the accident kills on Emma and Gregory Carlisle. 
So you can see that again Emma is on her path just to go and speak to her husband and as soon as she completes that conversation she will walk over to our right and when she walks over to our right that will allow us to shoot down the candelabra onto her head which will prompt her husband naturally to stand up which will get him into the radius of the other candelabra's dropping range so see i missed a shot there which was slightly annoying but anyway and there we go that's both of them taken out in quick succession so obviously you don't need to worry about the 60 second gap between them because it's more like a one second gap but from now you are on the clock and you can see it ticking down for me i've got 46 seconds now 45 44 um so we're just going to get down and carry out the drowning on edward as the next stage of this Now, he is, as you can see, in the bathroom. We just need to be careful traversing these halls. Do check, but also remember that you have to be somewhat quick. Um, and we can carry out that drowning kill now to reset the clock to 60 seconds from now. Um, you don't want to actually be initiating the drowning with only, like, five seconds left or anything. Because... Um, it does actually take a few seconds. It's quite a long drowning animation and it takes quite a few seconds for your target to actually die. Anyway, you'll see I didn't bother with hiding uh, Edward's body there because we are on the clock here and I was forced by the butler to take a slightly different route to get back to the library, but that's okay. We're all right with this. Um, 32. One seconds left until we have to make another assassination. So we're just going to hope and pray here that Patrick, I mean, if you're following the timing I am, it should happen as it does for me. Um, but yes, you basically need to wait for Patrick to be crossing the library just at the right moment. And then you can get that kill. So that ends up being quite nice sequencing. Again, just check where our friend here is. I have to wait for him uh, you don't want to get spotted as annoying as it is um, just try and stay calm because as you can see Rebecca on her path um, is not yet quite in location for us to drop the propane and get the explosion kill on her so you'll get to this room just uh, as she's making she's just having a drink uh, and then as we know she heads back over to the fireplace uh, this you'll you'll be quite nervous if you're like me at this stage because we've only got 20 seconds left to get this kill But it is long enough. You'll be willing her to move quicker 15 seconds now, but we are going to get it now Without wasting any time that will get us the explosion kill on Rebecca Carlisle and now we can make our way out of the mansion to an escape route uh, as you see, as you can see, it ends up taking me quite a while uh, to get to the same exit point that we used last time. So I will fast forward through that. Um, but at this stage, as long as you don't make any major mistakes, you don't need to rush anymore because the time is off. You should easily enough now uh, be able to complete stage three with that silent assassin rating intact. So there we go, just uh, coming up to the exit point now, uh, the same one we used last time, and uh, you will have completed stage three of the Baskerville Barney. Uh, I do hope that you found this useful. Um, I do try to make my videos as instructive as possible, because I know that uh, it can be helpful to have these routes. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for watching everyone, um, I really enjoyed making this video and I do hope that if you liked it you will like and please subscribe if you, if you enjoyed it. Um, and as you'll see in a second, the unlock is a unique melee weapon, the 
Kukri, um, which is quite time and place appropriate, I suppose, for the environs. The Kukri knife. Yeah, there we go. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.